on this uh, Thursday afternoon. Triple A Mad Dog 6 is your two-way sports talk telephone number as we chat. All right, let's do a couple things here. A little potpourri to get us going here in this particular hour. See if we can get onto a theme and get you moving. Number one, uh, I'm very surprised that there's been an issue with Kyrie, Le- Kyrie Leonard and the Spurs. I mean, it sounds like the Spurs want him to play, and he doesn't want to play. I mean, or based on injury or based on pain or what have you. Everybody saw the Popovich comments uh, from yesterday saying that uh, as far as we're concerned, he's good to go. And it's really up to uh, Kyrie if he wants to play. And it doesn't sound like that at the moment that he is ready to go out there and play. He's played nine games this year. They're five and four in the nine games they have played that he has played. Without them, they're 30 and 20. Uh, so even with the nine games, you know, he was, you know, he didn't play right at the beginning of the year. I mean, they've been, they've been out of it, the Spurs. Uh, they will make the playoffs, obviously. They will be probably a home court team. I mean, that's not guaranteed yet. There's a lot of teams right around where they are with the 24 losses. And you know, Golden State and Minnesota are going to be the one, two, and then they have to end up as the three or the four to get a home court. Right now, they are in that slot, two games ahead of about four teams with 26 losses. So we'll see if they maintain that, but it might be a very quick run here for the Spurs, and the Spurs might be going the other way right now uh, as a franchise. You know, last year they had a pretty good postseason, and then they got swept. Leonard got hurt, and they got swept uh, by Golden State, and they wouldn't have lost game one if he did not get hurt in Golden State on Mother's Day. Not that they would have won a series, but maybe a little more drama in it. Uh, but the Spurs right now, you know, listen, they got older players, Parker, Ginobili, folks like that, Leonard. Who knows if there's a little split with the organization and what to do with them. Um, very surprised. That's very unspur like that this kind of dirty laundry gets aired. And uh, it does appear to be a disagreement of his availability to play or not. Spurs seem to think that he can, and Leonard seems to think that he's not ready yet with the pain. He did come to New York and uh, had two doctor's opinions and uh, did work out at the NBA Players Association offices. It's got a full court, basketball court indoors. But other than that, nobody's really heard from him. He's not good with the media to begin with, so you're not going to get uh, you know a definitive answer. He's not going to hold a press conference and tell you what's going on. That's not his way. It's He's not going to do it. He's in a perfect market for that. San Antonio, not a lot of media pressure. He's not in a big place, but uh, very strange. And Popovich looked, you know, I mean, it didn't look, it was basically a matter of fact approach when he talked about it yesterday. But it is a, it is very surprising that the Spurs are in this slot. So we'll see how this uh, moves it along. San Antonio starts the second half at 35 and 24. Uh, they also start the second half in Denver tonight against the Nuggets, who, by the way, are one of those teams with 26 losses. You know, Denver is one of those teams that nobody's seen, heard, or anything. And all of a sudden, you're going to see Denver in a, po- in a postseason series. And you can say, boy, Denver's pretty good. Gary Harris and, uh, you know, Murray from from Kentucky, and, uh, you know, they ever get Millsaps back. I mean, and they have the other kid uh, who is good. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name. You know who I'm talking about, the big the big European. I mean, from that perspective, Denver's going to be a playoff team. Denver's going to be a team that, uh, you know, right now, in the playoffs in the, in the West is going to be Houston, San Antonio, Minnesota, OKC, and Golden State, those five. And then Denver, Portland, Houston, San Antonio, uh, Minnesota, and Golden State, and OKC is going to make it. That's five. And then the, the, the Pelicans, the Nuggets, the Trailblazers, and the Clippers, four teams are going to fight for three spots. That's what's going to happen in the NBA East, and Denver is going to be one of those teams because Denver right now has got the same record as uh, the Trailblazers, and they have the same record loss-wise as New Orleans. So that's going to be a, it's a big half-half knot in the NBA. And let's not forget Utah, who's won 11 in a row, and Utah is playing Portland, to, uh, and Utah has got Portland tomorrow night starting the second half. Let's not forget them either. So it might be essentially five teams for the three spots uh, in the West because Lakers, Kings, and Phoenix, uh, Dallas. Memphis are out, no question about it. That's where uh, Cuban's comment said let's tank because he's got no chance. Uh, but the uh, the back end of the Western Conference playoffs will be interesting to see who gets those last couple of spots. Now, maybe I'm being a little, um, you know, 
liberal of allowing Oklahoma City to be in the playoffs at 33-26 and 26 because they have struggled all year. They haven't played great for a while. They didn't do much from an offensive perspective. They couldn't shoot. Uh, now their defense has been a little spotty. So, And they're only seven games over 500. So maybe Oklahoma City should be in that mix too. I'm going to put them aside for a minute because I do think that they will break off and eventually be in pretty good shape. But the Denver, Portland, Utahs, which I should not forget, they've done a great job winning 11 straight. I mean, Utah, folks, uh, think about Utah for a second. They were 19 and 28, and now they're two games over 500. And the Clippers with Doc Rivers has done a good job too. So we'll see yeah, you know, how this only... second half runs around. Clippers begin the second half tonight in Golden State against the Warriors, so they're going to lose. So uh, right out of the gate, they're going to start with a loss. But we'll see how that works. But the Leonard thing is interesting, and I guess you can make a case that Leonard only that, that the Spurs could fall out of the playoffs entirely. They're not home free. They're only two or three games clear of the. Uh, teams with the 26 losses. Remember, one team with 26 losses right now is not going to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. In the East, it's a little different, uh, you know, because the battle is really only for the eighth seed. You know, Toronto, the Celtics, Wizards, the Cavs, uh, those four are, are pretty much organized. And then the other four spots, you know, Philadelphia is going to get in. Um, Indiana probably will get in. Milwaukee will get in. So that league exists seven or eight games over. So that would leave that last spot to Miami, to, um, you know, possibly Detroit, that kind of thing. But because right now it, it appears that Washington, Toronto, Boston, Philly, Cleveland, Indiana, Milwaukee are all going to make the playoffs, which is seven teams, which means Miami and Detroit could play for that last spot. Miami's got 28 losses and Detroit's got 29 losses. Miami's not that far off, nor is Detroit for that matter, uh, for catching uh, a team with 25 losses like Philly, like Indiana, like Milwaukee. But remember, there's only 23 games to go. It's not a t- ton of games. I mean, uh, the NBA, again, Golden State's got 24 games to play. I mean, some teams have 26, but a lot of teams don't have as many games as you think. I mean, uh, for instance, Oklahoma City's got 23 games to play before the end of the year. That's not a lot of games. So we'll see how, how it works out here for some of these clubs. But the uh, story right now is Leonard with the Spurs. We'll see. And you can understand why uh, the Mavericks uh, and why he said uh, Cuban and why he, and he had a fair comment about the fine. He said, I earned it. I said it on the podcast. I got all wrapped up talking to Julia Serving, so I understand that tanking may be the best bet. He's not wrong, uh, but that's a no-no as far as Silver is concerned. The NBA is very, very sensitive about teams tanking. Uh, Philadelphia did it for years. The NBA did nothing about it. They have finally reacted to Philadelphia, you know, being lousy and getting number one picks left and right, whether that be Fultz, Simmons, I mean, they got a million number one picks. Okafer is another one. I mean, they, you know, really a ton of them. Uh, and uh, as a result, they lost on purpose to do that. So that has made the NBA very, very sensitive to this. And, you know, that's why they changed the lottery system where next year uh, you're only going to have a 14% chance to get the number one pick if you have the worst record. This year it's 25%. And that is why they came down heavy on Cuban with the 600 grand because that is a no-no in the NBA's uh, deal about losing games on purpose, which as we have said a thousand times, is the way to go if you are an NBA no, man, no man's land. It is the way to go. I mean, for instance, you know, if you're the eighth seed in the, now, it's a little different in the West because these teams have good records, uh, but if, if you're the Clippers, do you want to be the eighth seed? Is it that important to get wiped out by the Warriors in the first round? I mean, is that that significant to you? Uh, to be a playoff team and then lose in four straight games, which you're going to, to the uh, Warrior team? And, you know, uh, forfeit the opportunity to get uh, a lottery pick. Now, chances are when you are that bad, when you are that decent and you're the last team in the lottery, you're going to get it. You're not going to get a high pick. You get like a 0.5 percent chance to get a high jet pick. But it is something that uh, the NBA is very concerned about. They don't like to hear it. So that is the reason why it came down heavy on uh, on Cuban. So we'll see how it works as far as the NBA postseason is concerned. Golden State and Houston are going to fight for the one seed. I think it means a lot more to Houston than it does to Golden State. Uh, I don't even think it... I, I don't know how much it even means to Houston. Uh, will Houston go push pedal to the metal with an old guard and 
Hall to get the one seed. So if they play the Warriors, they get home court. Is that that significant to them? I don't think Golden State cares one way or the other. Uh, I I don't think that he'll do that. Uh, I don't know what Houston will do in that scenario. We'll have to wait and see. I I think that Cleveland doesn't want to fall into the four hole. Uh, I think Cleveland, well, Cleveland knows that they're going to have to sit there and play a Toronto or a Boston in the second round of the playoffs anyway. Um, they probably would prefer to play Toronto since they've always beaten them. And if that's the case, being a four seed is not the worst thing. I think Cleveland right now just wants to feel good about themselves, win as many games as you possibly can, and you know see where it lines up with these new players on your team. Build some confidence. I think that's what Cleveland right now is most concerned about. We'll see how they handle it. They've got a schedule that is manageable. They start tonight against the Wizards, who have also played well without John Wall. But right now, if you look at the NBA and you look at it from a postseason perspective... I think really only two or three teams can still win. Uh, I'll have to put Cleveland in there because they will get to a final, I think. Um, and I, I have to put Golden State, obviously, and I guess I do have to put Houston in there, though I don't think Houston's going to win a championship. Uh, I guess i got to put those three in there. I don't know if Boston can. I know Toronto can't. Uh, there's only three teams, maybe four if you really pushed it with the Celtics, that really can win an NBA championship. So... The NBA is stuck in the same place they're always stuck in. You get the best players. Regular season, gets they get bored stiff with it. They know they can win on the road in the postseason series. So they say, you know what? What's the big difference? Do we win 55 or 58? Who Golden State learned that lesson two years ago, pushing for 73. And what did it get them? 15 after the hour, we continue. Mando Golden. 